What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I got another CX-5 right here that we're gonna be working on and this one right here has a check engine light. The check engine light right here I'm gonna show you. The DTC is for a, a P0126. And that code is caused by, it's called the coolant control valve on the engine. It's, the code is pretty much saying that the engine is running cold, that the engine is not running correctly. So these are the tools you're gonna to be needing to uh, perform this coolant control valve removal. Some needle nose pliers, just some regular pliers, uh, a small pick, the quarter inch ratchet, a half inch, you're gonna need a six inch uh, extension for the quarter inch, a 19 millimeter socket for the, it'll be on the half inch, a 12 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter socket, a Torx 30, a Phillips, and a small flathead. The first thing we want to go ahead and do is go ahead and open the hood. So once you get the hood open, you're going to want to work on this, uh, try to work on it when it's not hot, like after the car has cooled down. So I'm going to go ahead and open this radiator cap right here. Alright, that's good. So you want to make sure the car is cold so it just doesn't spray coolant everywhere. Because the system when it's hot it's it is definitely going to be under pressure. And I just want to relieve the pressure on the top so when I raise the car up and drain the coolant out, it just flows nice and easily out of the, out of the radiator. Next thing you want to do is just raise the vehicle up in the air. So once you have the vehicle up in the air, what you want to look for is this little hatch right here little access door some vehicles might not have this access door and you'll have to remove this this bottom plate right here this front one it's pretty easy to remove it's just a few skew, screws right here and a few 10 millimeters the next thing you want to go ahead and do is remove this latch right here or this access little door just want to slide it back and just come right out Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and crack this little screw right here. Well, that was pretty easy. And we're just gonna let all the coolant drain out of the vehicle. We're just gonna let it drain until it stops. So that's the reason I cracked that uh, I crack the radiator, a cap on the top, so this could flow a lot smoother. If you don't crack that radiator cap on the top, it'll take forever for this to drain. All right, once you have all the coolant drained out, the thing you want to go ahead and do is just go back in there and shut that valve by hand. Just hand tight is fine. Next, we're gonna just go ahead and install the hatch. And we're done with the underside of the vehicle. All right, we got the vehicle back on the ground and the next step we want to go ahead and do is uh, disconnect the battery and remove the battery. And this is where you're going to see the 10 millimeters. All four of these are 10 millimeters on the bracket and on the terminals. battery remove it and set it to the side 
Ooh, the next thing I want to go ahead and do is remove this engine cover right here. All you got to do is just tug on it just a little on each side. Just pull up on it. And then just move it to the side. All right, next we're going to go ahead and remove this 10 millimeter right here, right next to the throttle body. It's just a clamp loosening uh, just the grip on this uh, air cleaner box right here. Then we're going to go ahead and remove these two 10 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect map sensor right here. And now with the pick, we're going to go ahead and just press the side of this clip in right there. Go ahead and just put this uh, harness to the side. And to remove the air box, we're first going to go ahead and pull this hose off back to the back. Make sure it's off just like that. And then you're just going to want to grab the whole entire air box and just tug on it upwards and that's just going to release it and the whole air box should come out of the vehicle. Okay, once the air box is removed, you can see we freed up a lot of space. The next thing you want to go ahead and do is remove, remove these two 10 millimeters. This is kind of like a bracket that holds in the PCM and this is the PCM right here. We're going to need to remove the PCM as well. And this is the PCM hold down bracket right here. All right, so the next thing we want to go ahead and do is remove the two uh, clips that hold in uh, the harnesses that go onto the PCM. So you're going to see this little button right here on the side. You're going to push that button down and you're going to pull up on this clip. And that's going to release this connector on the PCM side. And then there's another clip on this side. It's kind of be a, like the same clip and you're just going to push it in. As you can see right there, and you're just going to pull it back, unlock it from the PCM, and there you go. Now the next thing I want to go ahead and do is remove this 10 millimeter right here, and this 10 millimeter right here, and it should release the PCM and the P there's a bigger PCM hold down bracket that's going to come with the PCM. Okay, we'll go ahead and remove these two. Once you got those two removed, all you're going to want to do is just tuck up on the PCM and it'll just release it just like that. All right, once the PCM is out of the vehicle, the positive battery terminal cable, you can go ahead and reroute it this way so it's not in the way. And the next thing we're going to be removing is this 10 millimeter right here and this 10 millimeter right here. This is holding down the, it's like a plastic bracket that holds down this this main harness and it goes through here and it comes right back out. All right, once you have these two millimeter to use two 10 millimeters removed, you're just going to want to go ahead and pull on this right here. Just pull up on it and it will release it. And then another tool I didn't mention that you might need is right here. It's a uh, it's like a tool panel tool. There's a little clip right here. And you're gonna go ahead and tug up on that clip to release it from the battery tray. Just like that. And then once that's loose, you're gonna go ahead and pull this whole harness to the front. And once you got that harness over here on the front, what we're doing is we're making room so we could remove the battery tray. And to remove the battery tray, this is a 12 millimeter right here and two 12 millimeters in the back. And once you got those 12 millimeters loose, all you can do is just lift up on the battery tray and remove it just like that. And we'll keep those uh, 12 millimeters in those spots. 
All right, now that the battery tray, everything is removed from here, this is the coolant control valve right here. And this is what we're gonna be replacing. It's not, uh, it, it looks a little difficult, but it really is not. It's a pretty easy job. Uh, the next thing we wanna go, the next thing we wanna do is just remove this clip. There's a little push clip on the back side of it. This is the electrical harness that goes to it. Just gonna wanna squeeze it on the back and just pull it back just like that. And just put this connector back here. Just out of the way. The next thing you wanna go ahead and do is, this is the transmission breather tube right here. We're gonna need to get that out of the way too. Just a little clip on the back. I'll go ahead and use my pick to remove it. Just like that. I'll just put that to the side as well. Put it down there. The next thing you want to go ahead and do is remove this little bracket right here. It's just a little bracket that grabs onto one of these lower hoses. The Nino nose pliers. I'm just going to grab the top and bottom of these, squeeze them together. And just pull it back just like that. The next thing we want to go ahead and do now is remove the coolant lines from the coolant control valve. There's only three lines going to it. We're going to remove this line right here. This line right here that has a, a retention clip on it. And then this line on the rear as well. All right, so we're going to be using these pliers right here to remove this clip right here. So the hose clamp, I mean. Go ahead and squeeze it. Pull it back, and then get a little rag to make sure nothing spills out of there. There you go, that wasn't that much. Let's punch this hose back here, put it to the side. Next, we're going to be removing this clamp over here. With your pliers, just go ahead and grab it right there. Slide it back. Okay. Go ahead and tuck this line up here. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is remove this C, this little C clip right here so we can move this other coolant line. So you're just going to go on the back of it with a little flathead. And just twist side to side, just like that. And it's just going to pull that C clip right back. Now we'll go ahead and put another rag underneath here. And you're just going to pull this right back just like that. All right, once you have all the lines removed, as you can see, this one right here, and these two in the back, there's gonna be three Torx bits on here. There's one right there. There's one on the bottom right over here. There's gonna be one right down there as well. You're just gonna remove those three Torx bits, but you won't be able to pull it out yet because there is still a connector back here plugged into it. So we'll be able to pull this out just a little, just enough to one clip that connector. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our, our quarter inch ratchet with our six inch extension and the Torx. This is a 30. underneath here it will drip a little bit but not too much I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back and once it's pulled back there you'll be able to see that connector right there I'm gonna go ahead and press on this and just pull it back just like that and now you can go ahead and remove this control valve All right, so once you have this cooling control valve removed, we need to swap this sensor back to the to the new uh, coolant control valve. This sensor does not come with it. 
So that's where your 19 millimeter will come in handy right there. Just break it loose and then just unscrew it. And you're going to want to bring everything with it. So there's going to be a little o-ring right here and then you're going to want to just take the washer as well. There you go, she's in the coolant control valve. This is where the, this is where the, that's the coolant temp sensor. That's where that's going to go right here. So you're going to want to inspect the gasket, make sure everything looks good on it. It doesn't look crushed or anything, it really looks, everything looks pretty good on it. Go ahead and install that. We're going to go do the same thing with the copper washer, just inspect it, make sure it's all good. I've never had a problem uh, reusing these and I've changed quite a few of these uh, coolant control valves out. So right here, just clean it up a little where those mating surfaces are going to, you know, make contact. Go ahead and screw it back into the new coolant control valve. Go ahead and snug it up. and it's ready to be installed back into the vehicle. Okay, so before we install this uh, cooling control valve back in here, we're just gonna wanna make sure this mating surface right here is clean. That's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and grab our cooling control valve, make sure this gasket right here is clean. You're gonna wanna go ahead and reinstall this clip. It'll be a little difficult to install once it's installed, and once the cooling control valve is put back on, so just push this clip back in, just like that. Line it up with the top torques. I'm gonna go ahead and just screw the top torques in by hand. I'm gonna go to the bottom left torques bit. And we're gonna do the same. We're gonna screw that one in by hand as well. to this last one over here. This one's a little difficult to get. Alright, once, once they're snugged up, go ahead and grab a quarter inch wrench, a ratchet, Tighten it till you start to feel that it gets tight. On the last one, you're just gonna give it just a little bit more. Back to the top one. Go about 45 degrees on that one. And there you go, coolant control valve is installed. The harness is connected on the back. Next thing we're gonna do is just reinstall those uh, coolant lines. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the front one right here. Just line 
Bring that back up there. Back to the rear. Install the rear lines. And the one with the C-clip on it. Just push it all the way in. And just push that C-clip down. And make sure to tug back on it to make sure that it is secure. I'll go ahead and grab our pliers. Put these hose clamps right where they belong. Put this hose clamp back. Go ahead and remember this part we took off. We'll go ahead and tighten that back up. Put that little clip back in there. It's like a little bracket that holds this little bottom hose. We'll install our electrical harness for the coolant control valve. And the coolant control valve is installed. All right, so once you have the coolant control valve installed, next we're just gonna wanna install everything else in reverse order. And we're gonna start with the battery tray. Tie in the 12 millimeters down. And remember the harness right here, we're gonna go ahead and put this back the way it was. We're gonna install the two uh, 10 millimeters I removed. Next we're going to go ahead and install our PCM, and PCM bracket. Go ahead and install the two 10 millimeter nuts. Once you have the PCM installed, go ahead and grab the positive terminal battery cable and reroute it back to the front how it was before. Just like that. Then we're going to want to go ahead and grab the PCM, the larger connector. Just line it up. Once it's lined up, you just want to go ahead and push this clip down and lock it down. Then we're gonna go ahead and do the smaller clip, the smaller connector, and it's gonna be the same. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install the, the PCM hold down bracket right here. It's pretty much like a bracket that holds down these clips so you can't remove them without removing this bracket. So next, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the air box that I removed. So you're just gonna, the whole thing has one piece. You're gonna go put it in, just like that. Try to make a little room. There, so you just slide right down in. Once it's lined up, you're just gonna give it a nice little push. Go ahead and slide the, the hose back on. We're gonna go ahead and tighten these two 10 millimeters in the front. We're gonna tighten the 10 millimeter hose clamp right here. That holds the hose to the throttle body. We're gonna reinstall this vacuum line right here. Then we're gonna go ahead and fish back out this, uh, this map sensor connector right here. Reinstall that clip that we removed before. Then reinstall the connector. 
All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and install the battery. I'm gonna go ahead and install the battery tie down. Then we're gonna go ahead and install the positive battery terminal. And then finally, the negative. Make sure it's tight. Then we're gonna go ahead and install the, the engine cover. All right, so everything is uh, installed. And the last thing left to do is you just fill the radiator with the uh, coolant and start the vehicle. All right, so you're gonna wanna go ahead and fill the radiator all the way to the top, just like this. Tighten the cap. Then we're gonna go ahead and start the vehicle. Okay, so we're in the vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and start it up. All right, so now we're gonna let the vehicle, you know, warm up, run for about uh, 15 minutes or so. Okay, so the vehicle's been running for about uh, 15 minutes or so. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the air on. I'm gonna put it to the hottest temperature possible. Put it on full blast. Rev it up a little bit. And the air that's coming out of the vents, if, uh, if it's not hot on the, on the full heat, on the heat all the way up, that means the coolant hasn't circulated through the system. But right now, these vents are, it's hot. So it looks like the coolant has circulated. All right, so I'm just gonna turn it off. I'm gonna let it cool down. Once it cools down, I'll recheck the radiator cap. I'll pull the cap off, recheck the coolant level. I might need to add some, I might not, and that's about it. Okay, so the vehicle's cooled down. I already went ahead and checked the coolant right here. It was uh, still full to the top. And the next thing you wanna go ahead and do is just make sure that your radiator, uh, the reservoir right here is to the F line. And that's it. That is, which, that is the steps and procedures you need to do to replace a coolant control valve. As you can see, it wasn't that difficult. It was pretty easy. All right, so if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I really enjoy making these videos for you guys, and I really appreciate all the support as well. And I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.